Hello and welcome to Tales of Majayal, or Tome 4, as it is also very commonly known. This is a roguelike game, and this is the start of a new playlist on the Another Dying channel. I don't know if you knew, or if you know, but this started out, this channel started out as pretty much a roguelike channel. As you remember, I started playing, or I or, if you remember, I started out by just doing Spelunky daily challenge videos. And then I kind of branched out with... I think I played Caves of Curd. And uh, when A joined me on the channel, he started by playing FTL. So, we have kind of a roguelike history and I kind of want, want to revive that. So this new playlist will allow me to do exactly the exactly that. This will be a mixed playlist, so I'm going to call it the Rogue Mix, I think. I think that's an that's an okay name. And this is just going to be single runs or something like that of or just one-off videos of different roguelikes. Um it doesn't mean that um I'm going to play new roguelike with every video and and so on. So um, I'm not going to have too many rules for for this playlist. It's just a general roguelike mix playlist, which um, is going to be fun, hopefully. And uh, yeah, so I don't exactly know. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to. Maybe I'm going to do a real let's play of one of these, or I don't know. And also, I'm you are going to see wildly different performances by me because um, some games I know kind of well, some games I don't know at all. Maybe I'm going to try a game that I've never played before or something. I don't know. So this is um, going to be interesting. Um, um, and yes, I'm going to start out this this playlist with playing Tome 4, which is a kind of high fantasy roguelike, which I'm um, I'm not the biggest fan of high fantasy, but uh, Tomb Force is really well made and it's a really, really good game, so I hope this is going to be fun. I've played this game a bit, I have not played a fantastic amount of it, so I don't know how good I am going to be. Um, and I haven't played it in, in months. So uh, this is the first time I'm checking it out again. This is actually the Steam version of the game. I've played it before it was on Steam, but I just re-bought it because I wanted to support uh, the developer. So yeah, I'm talking for way too long. Let's just start a new game. And I'm going to create a new character. And we're going to play the Tome module. And whoa, that is a bit of a an interesting loading screen. Okay, so it's really hot today, so you're going to have to indulge me and occasional... What did I want to say? You have to uh, endure me drinking some... Uh, drinking every once in a while, because yeah, it's really hot. It's like... 10 in, 10 in the evening, but um, it's still really, really hot in here. So, yeah, this makes it kind of difficult sometimes. So, we're going to create a new character. I think I'm going to go really boring here. I'm going to play the most vanilla-ass character that you can imagine. I think I'm just going to play a human fighter type person, just to get back into it. Um, we're going to play on normal difficulty, I think. That will be, yeah, play on easier, no. And unfair game setting, no, I don't want that. I'm going to play on normal difficulty. And of course I'm going to play on roguelike. That means we have permadeath. We have just one life. And that is it. If we die, it's over. There's also adventure mode, where you, uh, where you have several lives. I, yeah, well, you can also... Or exploration mode where you can just respawn after you die. 
But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play with permadeath because um, I firmly believe that this is part of the experience. So roguelike difficult, roguelike difficulty and human. So we can choose a higher human who has, or well, we can choose different sub sub races here. As you can see, halfling and dwarf, and I have also several locked races and classes here that you can unlock by com oh Jesus. by completing different challenges in game so uh, as you can see I have not played this a lot I have I think I've unlocked the summoner and uh, also the archmage but uh, not very much let's start a let's start a human character and as you can see there are different can I actually s yeah get over here so possess the gift of the pureborn which allows them to regenerate their wounds once in a while which is nice and they have stat modifiers strength and dexterity magic and willpower hmm, I don't know we get 11 life per level and we have an experience penalty of 15% every race has that except like those guys have an experience penalty of 35% which is a lot except of them they are like the most boring class they have another they have a, an additional talent category point which we will take a look at later and no stat modifiers get 10 life per level and have no experience penalty as i'm going as i said i'm going to play the most boring character possible so i'm going to play a cornac and so now we have the different classes that are also in different categories like what you expect you have warrior classes rogue classes mage classes wilder classes and many more so tome is really interesting in that you can in this diversity of classes and races which makes every game a very wildly different experience because they play really differently and that is extremely interesting but for now I'm just going to play a so we have a berserker which is basically for two-handed weapons and does a lot of damage we have a bulwark which is weapon and shield combat and, you, and I'm going to pick this one this means we're just going to try and build ourselves up into a human fortress that will never get damaged hopefully we will get damaged but uh, we will want to reduce that damage as much as possible so we are a walking tank and uh, in a game with permadeath I think that's a pretty good strategy that means we will have stat modifiers of um, plus five strength plus two dexterity and plus two constitution that's kind of good even though we uh, want to be as fortress like as possible we will put most of our points into strength at first because um, that's important because we need to do that to unlock skills but we will see to that later I'm going to call this guy Septimus Warren just Septimus Warren that's a literary reference if you if you know that if you can if you recognize that reference you are into modern literature like modern English literature something it's very well known so uh, you should recognize that okay let's start let's start the character okay Septimus Warren and no this character is hopefully not going to be suicidal as his namesake is in the book it's Virginia Woolf Mrs. Dalloway so if we didn't if you didn't know let's put all these points into strength we are going to so one of our most important skills here is shield wall so this is a a skill that we can just activate and then it's on basically for all the time and it will cost us some stamina and that's not too much of a problem I think we will have enough stamina uh, either way 
And that means we enter a protective battle stance, increasing defense by 8 and armor by 13. At the cost of minus 20% physical damage, so we will do less damage, but that's not too much of a problem. We, we can compensate for that with good weapons and stuff. And um, yes, this basically increases our defense and armor, and we get resistance to stunning and knockback. And this is vital, so we want to max this talent ASAP, as fast as possible. I'm also going to put a point into a quick recovery that allows us to regenerate stamina faster. So we get plus 0.8 stamina per turn. That is kind of good because we actually, yeah, we have a stamina cost here. And um, that also means that we also need that to get fast metabolism, which gives us life regeneration. And we definitely want that. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to play a good build or anything. I'm just um, going after a hunch. I'm just... whatever. I'm just going to go with what I think could be alright. I'm not a min-maxer and I'm, I, haven't, I haven't read any facts or something, so... Let's um, put that point into vitality. Okay, so when your life falls below 50%, you heal for a base 13.4 health plus 1% of your maximum life each turn for 8 turns. That's also pretty great. And sc the healing scales with our constitution, so we're also going to put points into constitution. And uh, this, okay, physical power, max encumbrance, physical safe. This gives us more defense, which is also pretty good. I think these three are actually our stats that we want. And constitution defines your character's ability with then and resist damage. So we get more max life and more physical safe. We also want some of that, but um, at the beginning we will put most into that. Because most of our skills that we want, for example this one here, armor training, we want more armor training, and this is dependent on strength, so we need a strength of 26 to uh, increase that. Or like, no, of 20 to get the next point, and after that it's going to be 26, so we need a lot of strength. So let's put this point into vitality, because I like that. And we also have a category point, that means we could unlock one more category here. Um, maybe war cries at some point, improve yourself and weaken others, that could be kind of okay. Maybe we're going to do that at some point, but for now I'm just not going to spend it and, uh, and leave it at that. This here is a, um, also kind of nice, those are attack abilities. So. Um, we also want that at some point. This is just a shield pummel, so we hit them with our shield. And that does um, kind of a lot of damage. And we can stun our enemies, which is also kind of nice. So we're just going to put points into that too. And we have a riposte, that is when we block, we have a chance of doing a counter attack. Which is also very nice. So, yeah. I think we are done here for now. I'm going to accept the changes. Welcome Septimus Warren. I'm going to read that out at first, but if, if I'm going to do subsequent run, runs, I'm just going to skip over that. At least I'm going to skip over things that we have already read, because, yeah. You are a native of the northern region of the Allied Kingdoms, a peaceful land that both humans and halflings call home. You hail from the small town called Dearth. Fun fact about... Uh, tome about Tales of Magiel, this game was originally called Tales of Middle-earth, so this was a kind of a Tolkien fan game, but um, at some point they, I don't know what exactly happened, but yeah, they kind of got a cease and desist from, uh, from the Tolkien guys, I think, or I don't know, they couldn't use the Tolkien stuff anymore, and so they changed it into a an original fantasy setting, but it's still very much influenced by uh, by Tolkien lore. So, 
Humans are the most common race of the land, and you are one of them. In an attempt to prove your worth, you have decided to venture into the old and wild places of the world, looking for ancient treasures and glory. You have come to a land called the Dearth Fields, on the western border of the Thaloran Forest, in search of the, tr of the Troll Mire. It is an old forest infested with trolls and all kinds of wild animals. To the west lies another dangerous place, the old ruins of Corpul. You heard the caves below it were infested by vermin and undead. After days of travel you have found the forest and entered it. What will you find there? Okay, and there we are. We are down here. I'm going to use a, um, a tile set just for the video. Normally I like to use... Um, Normally I like to use the ASCII set, but I think for a video it's kind of better to use the tile set because it's it looks nicer. I love ASCII graphics in roguelikes. You kind of it's kind of a developed taste, but um, if you have played a lot of ASCII roguelikes, you you just get used to that, and I like the clearness of everything. But uh, <coughs> but if you're not used to that, it is kind of can be kind of opaque and difficult to follow so I'm going to use the tile set so let's see where quest log so every time you start the game you start with two with a quest here well with a beginning quest and that means you have to explore two dungeons basically clear them and basically kill the boss in each of these dungeons so and which dungeons they are that is kind of determined by uh, which class and or which race you're playing. If you play an, an elf, you have different dungeons here. But we can actually go to each uh, to every dungeon, and this is something that we will do. So uh, yeah, we will do that at some point, or we would do that pretty quickly actually. Um, so we have a first dungeon, and we have a more difficult second dungeon. The thing is. If you play a human, those two dungeons feature very strong enemies, especially the Trollmire. The first section of the Trollmire to just go through it and kill the boss we need to kill, that's kind of easy, that's not too much of a problem. But there's actually another section of the Trollmire that is way more difficult, and we want that, and we actually want to, I actually want to get that in one going. So for now, we're just going to exit the Trollmire, or maybe we're just going to take a look at the first level here. And then we're going to go out, exit, and go into another dungeon. That is, in the st into the start dungeon of the elves. Because that is a much easier and much... Uh, yeah, much more playable dungeon. And um, that will allow us to get some decent loot, some decent, uh, some decent stuff. And earn some, earn some money, get some level... Uh, yeah, get some levels and... Then we will come back and do everything that we need to do. The ruins of Corpula can be really difficult, actually. Especially at the beginning. Maybe we're going to do that at, we're going to do that at a later point. Because, as I said, it's permadeath. So, first thing, we have to rearrange some stuff here. I'm going to keep the shield wall here, because we only need to activate that once. Infusion rege regeneration, we definitely need that. So we have the shield pummel, the block, which we will use often, and uh, regeneration. It has a cooldown of 10, so it has a cooldown based system, 10 turns of cooldown. And this is basically how we can heal ourselves right now. And we have another infusion. Cure yourself of physical effects and reduce all damage taken by 14% for 4 turns. That is also kind of nice. We can use that in difficult fights. Um, block and shield pummel. Okay, we have activated our shield wall. And this is basically how we are going to roll. And yes, I'm going to explore the first level of the Trollmire, actually. This is a fairly open field, as you can see, with, with some stuff in here. Uh, some ruins, apparently. Let's just explore those ruins. No enemies yet. What is that? Oh, it's just a bit of a wall. And we have an enemy here. We have a giant brown mouse. Not going to be a problem. I'm just going to murder it. And kill it. And a snake. Let's kill the snake. That snake was a little bit more difficult. Slime. 
We found a... Okay, now there are trolls. They are kind of more difficult. But, um... There most likely won't be anything too difficult here in the first uh, in the first level. So we can just go ahead and murder everything. Maybe gain our first level. Our first level up and... Be cool with that. Let's see. This is a sealed door, so there's probably going to be a, a treasure, but also some kind of strong enemy behind it. Um, I'm going to open that door after I got my first level up. We'll probably be fine even if we open it now, but uh, I don't want to be too too risky here too risque. So what do we have here? We have a balanced iron greatsword of massacre. There's a two-handed sword and we're not going to use that because we always want to have our shield. We will have a one-handed weapon and a shield. Doesn't matter if we have a mace, an axe or a sword or whatever. But it has to be one-handed. Okay. I'm just going to explore all of it because we want to find everything that we that we can find. So, oh yeah, this is our inventory actually. So we have found an elm longbow. Yeah, not going to not going to use that. And uh, we found that greatsword, and we have this little gem here. The yellow, the yellow background here means that those are currently in our in our transmogrification chest. This is something I unlocked at some point. You unlock that by completing the troll mire completely. Um, and then every character is going to have it, and that means we can basically transmo transmogrify all of the items that we can find. That means we don't need to sell them in shops, we just get the money immediately. Which is extremely convenient to have. So, uh, yeah. And once you unlock it, every character that you play will have it. So, that's kind of nice. So, this is a kind of a lantern down there. Survivor's Breath Lantern of Clarity. And this is much better. It has the same light radius as ours. Yeah, so, this... The stat of that is just gives us the light radius of plus two. And this increases our physical save, our mental save. Same light radius. We have C stealth and C invisible, and we have a healing modifier of plus ten percent. That is much better. So we're just going to wear that. And we're going to get rid of our old lantern because we don't need it anymore. That chest is really really great really something good to have oh jesus i'm having a bit of a hiccup here from the water i'm drinking i apologize for that okay let's see let's continue so this down there is most likely another infusion like our regeneration thing or a wild infusion here so let's see what that is it is another regeneration infusion. Uh, let's heal 63 over 5 turns. And ours is 60 over 5 turns. So it's not much better. We can actually... Uh, can we infuse ourselves with that? Let's use it. Yeah, so now we have another regeneration infusion. We can get rid of that at some point, but um, that means we can ha actually have two re regenerations at the same time, I think. So, uh, and we got a level up. So, brilliant. Let's spend some points. Put everything into strength. Uh, oh no, we n actually need to get it to 26 to level that up. Okay. But now we can actually put another point into shield wall, which we are of course going to do can't put that point into anything, so I'm just going to hold on to that. What? Oh yeah, let's save our points that we have, so then uh, we don't always have this 
thing over there telling us that we can spend points for our level up. Now it looks it just looks different. That means we have some saved points. I don't didn't even know that feature existed. Maybe it's new. Let's kill some more stuff here. Murder everything. Murder everything. We definitely want to murder everything. Because that means... Oh, I found length of troll intestine. Gurgh. Just disemboweled that troll. I think those ingredients are needed for special quests that we can get, if I remember correctly. We are not a character that can use alchemy, so we actually also don't need those gems, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think we don't need those gems, so we can just go ahead and sell them. And okay, I think we have explored mostly everything. There are some patches, but I think that's just uh, something we can't get into because there are trees all over the place. So let's open that door and see what we can find. Okay, there's a degenerated skeleton warrior. I'm going to activate my in wild infusion and let's try murder that thing. Okay, that wasn't a problem. There actually was no treasure, it was just the Skeleton Warrior. Well, whatever. Doesn't doesn't matter. Okay, let's now exit to the world map. I'm going to get rid of both of these. And... Yeah, the, transmog the transmogrification chest is really useful because this game has an encumbrance system. And uh, can't carry unlimited stuff. So, uh, yeah. So this is the troll mire. This over here are the ruins of Korpul, and this is the town, Dearth. We're going to go there at some point. But since we don't need to sell any stuff, uh, we don't need to go there yet. We will go there a bit later. What are you? What is that? It's a Allied Kingdom's Halfling Patrol. They are, they are friendly. Like, fights on the world map can, re can be really can be really nasty, so we definitely want to avoid that, it's at least now. So up here, this is basically where the elves start. This is um, the elven town, Chatur. This is the Heart of the Gloom, which is the second dungeon of the elves. And this is Norgoth's Lair, which is the first dungeon of the elf. And we will play through all of Norgoth's Lair now. The different thing about Norgoth's Lair is that it's not an open field like the Trollmire. It's much more of a classic roguelike dungeon, which means it is um, like rooms and corridors. And this ma makes it much more manageable and it's not that annoying. I kind of like that. So um, yeah, we're just going to explore this one, kill everything, get, get all the money we can get, all the, all the stuff we can get and have fun with it, basically. Okay, we found an iron dagger, which we don't need. So yeah, what we definitely want is better equipment. We desperately need that in the beginning, because we are very ill-equipped. So we have found an insulating leather belt of transcendence, which gives us additional mind power. We don't need that, but at least we get some Cold and fire resistance and a bit of physical save. Can you use that? Yeah, we will put that on because we didn't have a belt before. So our pants were just falling down all the time. It was annoying. But as soon as we find a better belt, which has stats that benefit us more, we will change that. Also, um, this game, as far as I know, doesn't have... Uh, have cursed items, so we can just put everything on that we find. Okay, and that thing does nothing. We don't need that. We don't need a quiver of arrows, because we're not going to use bows. So, uh, yeah, let's just continue. There's a bear and another bow. Steady elm lung bow. Hm. Also, uh, in this game, actually, the world map is the same every time you play. I think it doesn't change. What changes is each dungeon. So, uh, yeah, this is basically the roguelike element. 
Okay, this is the path to the next level of Norgoth Lair. Is there anything we haven't explored yet? Yes, down there. Let's see. Maybe we will find some inter something interesting here. Of course, we didn't. There was nothing. Nothing at all. Well, all right. Now we are done here. Let's go to the next level. And do we need anything here? Elm Longbow of Fire, which is the name of the power metal band I'm going to found tomorrow. Elm Longbow. No, we don't need anything. Okay. Okay, fine. That's good. Let's continue. We're almost there for our next level up, which is awesome. And level up. Okay, let's get some more points into strength. And now we can put one more point into shield defense or into shield wall. So we we will have that maxed by the next level because for the next point we need to be level four. That is great. And um, we can get one point into weapons mastery. That means it decreases our physical power by 13 and increases our weapon damage by 25%, which is good when using swords, axes or maces, which we will do. So I'm going to put a point into here and now we're going to do more damage. And that's brilliant. We definitely want to do more damage. So you can be as tanky as you want, but if you don't do any damage, you won't have a good time. You won't have a good time at all. Okay, let's see. We found a linen cloak. It's not great, but it at least give us, gives us one more defense. And we're going to wear it. And now we have a cloak on. How nice. We even have it on our little sprite here. That is so cute. And this is a spiked iron mail armor of fire resistance. So our thing has four armor and two defense and plus 12 fatigue. This has the same. But when we get hit, we deal 11 physical damage, which is good, and fire resistance, so this is better. So we're definitely going to wear that, and we're going to get rid of that. Those armor things are just extremely encumbering, so we don't want that. Kill you. There's another snake, and another snake. We are Septimus Warren, murderer of snakes, basically. Worm mass. They're not very difficult, but they can split into more worm masses. And then you have a. If you're not careful, you can have a whole army of worm masses against you. But they are very quickly dispatched, so that's not a problem. So now we have cleansing iron plate armor, but we can't use that until we have armor training on level 3. So. I'm going to move that into normal, our normal inventory. Because I think by the next level up we will actually be able to increase our armor training. Because then we will have enough strength for that. And uh, then we are going to use that, that piece of armor. Because uh, anything here? No. Maybe here? No. That just looks weird. Um, Yes, because we want to wear the most potent armor that we can find. There's another skeleton person down there. Another degenerated skeleton warrior. No problem. Just kill it, find some coins, and be happy about it. Okay, we found some lore. So there's a lot of writing in this game. Mostly by finding lore scraps, like this one. So, dear Wiseman, oh, what feelings your last letters have inspired within me? Primarily mirth, with a good amount of scorn. Oh. Must you continuously assail me with tale after tale of your waving of wooden swords and pestering of toothless mongrels? Allow me to, allow me to recount your legends in a much more succinct manner. One day I fell to kill a dog. Such bravery, such pluck and daring do. So, this is giving me some passive-aggressive vibes here. Your petty escapades are made ever more insignificant by the trials I have myself have recently overcome. 
Mere days ago I was trekking through the old forest. That's outside dearth, wise man. Terror must already grip you. When, by unfortunate happenstance, I came across a most hideous, bloated, oozing and chittering horror. No less than the giant ant's repulsive progenitor. Such hordes of frenzied chitina, chitinus, chitinus, I think, chitinus young it had at its command. It was as though the ground itself was swarming forward to devour me. So Rolf and Wiseman apparently have kind of an adventurous rivalry going on there. Apparently. And yet I live, Wiseman. I sincere, uh, sincerely hope that my letter hath revealed to you your folly. Only when you have faced true danger can you call yourself an adventurer. Bore me with your tales no longer. Rolf. Alright. That is interesting. I kind of like that. This game has a lot of these uh, little flavor texts and... Uh, I always like it when games do that. It's not critical, it's just a bit of lore, a bit of a bit of flavor text, as I said. And that does exactly that. It does improve the flavor of the game. So we have found an agate. Okay, so we can actually huh. I don't know exactly what we can do. We can wield and wear them and we can imbue objects with them. And if we imbue an object with that thing, it gives us plus one to every stat, which is kind of nice. I don't know how you can actually do that, because I'm not very, not very experienced in this game. Yes, we don't want that star staff, because star staff, what is that even? Magic. Magic stuff. Who wants that? Okay, let's see. We have found a pickaxe. That is kind of nice. We will um, Yes, we will equip that pickaxe and that means we can now dig through walls And digging through walls is something that we can use And that gives us also infra vision radius so we can see through wall. We cannot see through walls, but I think we can sense if there's something behind behind a wall or behind a door which is great. So we want that and we get plus one strength, which is also nice. So now we can basically, I'm going to show you that as soon as there's no one left here and we are regenerated. So I can basically just dig here and now we have digged away that tree. That can be kind of useful, especially in the ruins of Corpul. Because um, the end boss of the ruins of Corpul can be in a very nasty position. And this gets much easier if you can dig. We have found a pair of iron boots of uncanny dodging. I like that. So it gives us armor defense and ranged defense and we want that because we don't have any shoes on at the moment. We are just going barefooted through the snow. we appear to have a good constitution because we are not dead by now from having the worst worst cold ever imaginable but we're not so apparently we have a good constitution kill the gray mold there's another bit of plate armor down there and there is the boss okay let's see Okay, we are good for now. As soon as he's here, I think he can... Yes, and now I'm going to activate the wild infusion. And now we're going to try and murder that thing. Let's do a shield pummel. Let's activate our regeneration infusion. Now we have a thing here, which is called infusion saturation. And um, that increases the cooldowns of infusions if we do another infusion while this is still going. So we have to be careful about that. Let's block. Shield pummel. 
think we're doing all right here. Block, shield pummel, and killed it. Level up. So we have found the river's fury. This gorgeous and ornate trident was wielded by Lady Nashua, and when you hold it, you can faintly hear the roar of a rushing river. Okay. And we have found the Rod of Recall, which lets us exit dungeons without having to walk back. That's very nice. You always find that from the first boss that you murder. Um, the River's Fury. A weapon trident. We cannot really use a trident because it's a two-handed weapon and uh, it's not a mace, a sword or a an axe. So we're not going to use that. But we're going to keep it for now because we can actually use that for one quest. And there's another piece of plate armor, and uh, another iron greatsword, okay. Let's compare those two plate armors. So, plus 7 armor, plus 3 defense, and 10% nature and blight resistance. And this one, plus 15% cold resistance, and damage when hit melee, 11 physical. Other than that, it's the same. You know what, I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to get rid of this one. Yes, and move to normal inventory. Okay. Now, I think we are good now. Yes, we are. Yes, we are all right. Okay, let's see. Let's explore the rest of the forest and then we're going to get out of here. No, oh, some more enemies. Oh yeah, and we also got two level ups at once. The bosses give you lots of levels. Okay, so we have got three class points now. I'm going to put one into that. And we are going to get... Uh, we're going to get this one, Repost. Which will, let us, which will let us do some damage. And we're going to put one point into Fast Metabolism. How about that? Now our blocking becomes much more effective. I'm going to put some points into strength until we can't anymore, like now. I'm going to put the rest into constitution. And now we can get one more point into armor training. And we have one point... I can put actually a point into combat accuracy. Or another one into vitality. I think I'm going to put that into combat accuracy. Alright, I think we are good now. Yes, we are. Alright. I accept the changes and... We are much more warrior-like now. We have actually maxed our shield wall and everything is awesome. Let's use the Rod of Recall now. The Scrying Orb, by the way, lets us um, identify items. Okay, and we can actually wear that plate armor now. So, let's get rid of this one. Yes. Awesome. And now we are good, basically. Yes, we are good. We can, yeah, let's use the Rod of Recall. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Need to wait a bit and now get rid of all that stuff. Yes, we don't need any of that. All right. Please wait while loading the level. So, there are two things we can do now. We can either go to... Hmm, I think I'm going to go into the Heart of the Gloom now. The second elven dungeon. And then we'll go into the Trollmire. Or we can go into the Trollmire first. I don't know if we're good enough yet for the, for the big troll. Or maybe we can actually go down and go to the mages' dungeons. Hmm. Heart of the gloom. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to visit the trollmire now. I think we will be all right. Uh, yeah, I think we will be all right. Okay, let's get to the exit here. And now I need to see for that the digging skill is pretty awesome because then you don't need to walk around it you can just punch a hole into whatever and be happy about it oh, and there's a bit of a scrap down there 
A tattered paper scrap. I think we need to find all tattered paper scraps to actually get to the, the bonus stuff here. You find a tattered page scrap. Perhaps that this is part of a diary entry. It's a gorgeous glade, but I could swear that looked like part of a human femur. So an absolutely gigantic troll, but fortunately I threw him off my scent. Alright. Alright, alright, okay. Uh, let's go to the next level. And now... It's again going to... I think it's going to be three levels of just that here. Of just those woods. And we can explore and murder things in. Hopefully we will find something interesting. That would be very much appreciated. Okay, nothing over here. Nothing anywhere. Alright, 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 alright. I don't like the troll mire. I find this dungeon supremely annoying. Let's murder everything. Because it's so... Uh, it's so annoying to get around in. We found an iron maze of paradox. This is, I think, something that we can actually use. Is it better? It does more damage. A little bit less of a crit chance, but... Uh, it does plus five temporal damage. That's good. That is very good. Or plus six temporal damage. Yeah, that is even better. Yeah, we're going to equip that. It's better than the other thing that we have. So now we have a mace. I'm going to get rid of the longsword. And continue. Continue murdering white wolves. Continue murdering endangered, in, well, endangered species. Because we are an eco-terrorist. We are human after all. All humans are eco-terrorists, aren't they? Okay. Hmm. That's a bit of a lake there. We can swim, th swim through that can also just not do that, because why Why would we even kill the white jelly? Which is hopefully also an endangered species, because I don't like the sound of that. We killed a midge swarm with our iron mace. Well, a linen rope of lightning. Which we won't use, because why would we equip a linen robe when we have plate armor? That doesn't even make any sense. Oh well, okay. Let's see, something up there? Okay, there's the second tattered paper scrap. Ugh, again. But he's just a stupid old troll. It'll be easy not to let him get wind of me. Inertly found his treasure stash further on. Or definitely, definitely found his tre treasure stash further on. But I had to turn back. If you get this, help! So he has apparently got into trouble with that troll there. Also, that troll has a treasure stash. And in that treasure stash is actually the transmogrification chest. Which we already have, so that's not, yeah, not that interesting for us. But maybe we'll find some interesting items there. So, uh, and another level up. Awesome. Awesome. Put two points into that, and another point into Constitution. And put a point into Weapons Mastery now. We have another class point, and I think I'm going to put that into Fast Metabolism now. Because why not? Get us some decent health regeneration. Now we regenerate 5.79 health each turn. So each turn, each time something happens, and that can be kind of nice because uh, we have a steady stream of healing going now, whether we use a regeneration thing or not. Found an iron great maul. We don't need that. It's going to get rid of that. Another troll. Iron Dagger, we don't need that. Just gonna get rid of that, awesome. 
More stuff. I think we are done here. And wait till the next level. Oh, this is an iron shield. And this is a reinforced iron shield of cold resistance. It has less shield power, but much more armor. We're going to move that to the normal inventory. And we're going to equip that. Oh, we have a bit of a side quest here. Giladir, the lost warrior. Please help me. I'm afraid I lost myself in this place. I know there's a recoil portal left around here by a friend, but I have fought too many battles and I fear I will not make it. Will you help me? Lead on, I will protect you. I definitely will do that. I'm going to equip this shield and get rid of this shield. And now we have a better shield. We have even more armor. Help, wolf to the east. So basically we need to escort him to the to the portal they kind of changed the AI behavior like a few in the better version it was like he was just running into every enemy where is he going where is he oh fuck don't get yourself killed Jesus it's still kind of annoying but uh, at least it is kind of manageable where are you where are you where the fuck are you? Okay. Giant brown mouse. Uh, you're a warrior. Help! It's a giant brown mouse. Oh god. I'm so afraid right now. And we escorted him. And this means we can improve our strength by two, our constitution by one. We can improve our talent vitality or learn the talent unflinching resolve. Learn to recover quickly from effects that would disable you. Each turn you have a 13% chance to recover from a single stun effect. At talent level 2... No, no, we don't need that. Can improve by, I think I'm just going to improve my strength by 2. Yeah, thank you. Because I want to get all the strength. We found a starlit copper amulet. We get light and darkness resistance, and we have 20% blindness immunity. Yeah, why not? We don't have an amulet yet, so we're just going to use that. Okay. A bit of a cloud going on here, and I can't see anything. Or maybe it's mist? Uh, it's probably mist. Okay. Fun fact. In German, there's also the word mist, and it means crap. Like, literally, crap. Oh, this is the boss here. Let's stun him. Let's... Oh, we won't have any problem here. Okay, stun him. Activate the wild infusion. And just murder that fool. Lock and repost. We found blood of life. This vial of blood was drawn from an ancient race in the Age of Haze. Some of the power and vitality of those early days of the world still flows through it. Drink me, mortal. The red liquid seems to whisper in your thoughts. I will bring you light beyond darkness. Those who taste my essence fear not the death of flesh. Drink me, mortal, if you value your life. And we found Spellhunt remnants. These once brilliant Vodatun gauntlets have fallen into deep decay. Originally used in the spell hunt, they were often used to destroy arcane artifacts, curing the world of their influence. Okay, and the way to the treasure is to the east, but beware, death probably awaits there. I think we may be alright at level 7, so um, we're going to see. If not, we have to flee as quickly as we can. But we have another level up, let's do that first. Put one point into strength. I think I'm going to put that into dexterity now. One more class point. Let's get that into shield pummel to increase that for a bit. I'm going to put that into vitality. Yes, 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 yes. We are all right. We are good. We are done. Okay. So let's take a look at the stuff that we have. So we have the blood of life. Oh! to grant an extra life. Then we can we actually get an extra life. That is interesting. Um, yeah, I'm just going to use that. 
And now we have an extra life, so we can actually die once. This is interesting. We have found an iron longsword of crippling. It is a hmm. weapon crit. It has a high critical hit chance. It's a little bit less powerful than our mace. And we can crittle, uh, we can cripple the target with. Uh, I don't know if I like that. Oh, I'm not going to. Spell hunt remains. We don't have any gauntlets yet, so we're going to wear that. Let's see what does it do. Spell save, mind power, mental crit chance. Uh, we don't need that actually, but armor and defense. That's kind of all right. We can destroy an arcane item with that, but we don't need that. Let's put that over here. Okay. Yes, I think we are good for now. I haven't yet found any item that is really good. I don't like that, but uh, maybe we're going to be more lucky later. And what are you? Poison Ivy. Ugh. Disgusting. Poison Ivies. I don't like Poison Ivies. No, I'm not going to do a Batman joke. Okay, let's see. Anything over here? Nothing that interesting. I don't like the troll Maya. It's so tedious. Okay. Hmm. I get kind of OCD in these games and want to explore everything. Sorry about that. Uh, let us dig ourselves through here. Isn't even going to be anything interesting here, isn't it? An iron great sword, bit of gold. Hmm. Doesn't look that way. Oh, nothing interesting here. There's a wolf over here. Nothing much else. Okay, okay. Well, I think we might be done here. There's another giant brown mouse. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we are done here. Okay, let's go to the next level of the Trollmire and see if we get murdered there or not. This will be our test now. Let's follow the path. Oh no, it's not here. There has to be an exit now. Yes, there it is. Okay, Lair of a Mighty Troll, yes, traces of blood are everywhere. Iron long sort of crippling, no we don't need that, yes. Um. Alright. Okay, let's see, this is not the Mighty Troll, this is just a regular old forest troll. Let's open that up. There's a forest troll and there's a stone troll. I'm going to stay in here, because that means we... Oh yeah, this is the guy. Um, Bill the Stone Troll. It's not the most menacing name, but it is indeed a menacing enemy. Let's activate our Wild Infusion and try murder that guy. And for now we're actually kind of okay. Well, that was actually no problem at all. Hmm. Awesome. And we found the Tooth of the Mouth, which is... Uh, yep, it is a better pickaxe. It's a unique pickaxe. So we get Dig. And we do 15 Blight damage. With every hit. With our normal weapon, actually. So, awesome. Oh no, when we get hit, yes. When we get hit, we do 15 blight damage. Yeah, I'm just going to equip that. Uh, we can get rid of this one. And we are fine. So let's explore the rest, kill some trolls, and get his treasure. There are some gems here, a little bit of money. What is that? Iron Maze of Projection. 
take a look at that. It's even stronger. We do mind damage instead of temporal damage. Can be used to project and attack as mind damage. Doing 150% weapon damage. So we actually uh, placing all other charms into a cooldown. So we actually get a skill from that. Well, let's just equip it. It's a bit stronger, so... 150 weapon damage at range 10, so we actually can project that out. That is good. The citrine, and okay. I think we are done here. And I'm also done recording this video now, because I've been going for an hour now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to continue this in the next video, I think. So it's not going to be one video a pop, because some of these games can take very long. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and see you again next time. Goodbye.